You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Godzilla vs. Kong, uh, a movie that I could not believe is actually happening. I thought, there's no way in heck they're going to make a Godzilla vs. Kong. They did. Here we are. Eric, how the hell are you doing? Excited to talk about this movie uh, and how ridiculous it is. You were talking last week from my care a lot about how you enjoyed the ridiculousness in a movie, about mm-hmm. how um, you should be asking yourself, why not? Mm-hmm. And this is a clear example of everything that you had said last week. Absolutely. And I'm not going to contradict myself. I mean, this is clearly a why not. Hey, let's literally destroy the whole city of of you know of Hong Kong. Hong Let's Kong just is gone. gone, ladies and gentlemen. Get it out off of there. the map. Why not? Why not? Um, you know, let's have let's have this evil company make Mecha Godzilla, which I consider myself a Godzilla fan. I'm not a Godzilla Uber fan, but correct me if I'm wrong. Mecha Godzilla was actually made by aliens, right? Listen, we got Mechagodzilla in this movie. I was not doing any research for this movie. I was not prepared for Mechagodzilla, but we got it. Was it necessary? No, but neither was this entire movie. Uh, no. And and that's fine, because this was... We all came for one thing, Jordan. I clicked on this movie and recommended it because of, well, we all know one thing, and that's because I wanted to see a giant ape versus a giant lizard, atomic lizard, and now versus a giant robot lizard. And I got that very much. I got all of it. Yeah, Isn't you it? did. Yeah. Only twice. Only twice does this happen. Well, the latter is only once. But again, one of the biggest issues that I have with this rebooted Godzilla King Kong verse. I don't know what, what I mean. I don't know what the what they're going to call it. Uh, it. It's it's. It doesn't know if it's serious, and it doesn't know if it's if it's camp. You know what I mean? It's like that '80s Godzilla. It's like, eh, maybe it's funny, or maybe it's super serious because they're trying to make it serious, but they have no idea what they're doing. There is they, no way you can tell me that they were trying to take this movie seriously. Um, and the other two Godzilla films, yeah. Uh, Kong Skull Island, yeah, they're definitely making those movies seriously. There are parts in this movie where I'm like, um, Millie Bobby Brown, that's her name. I'm like, she's she's trying to actually act here, and I don't know why. Commit, you know, she's a good actress. So you got got to go all in. I'm not trying to defend her on here, but at the same part, this movie is full of plot holes. You know, plot holes covered. Uh, uh. Ab- abandoning pretty much all reason of why everyone should be still living gone, you know, gone. get that out of there. Okay. Right. Again, uh, cities that are, were once mega metropolises that are no longer here, get them out. You know, like that's, we got to see some epic level destruction, not Japan, but in China, that's America's way to just give a little middle finger to, to China. Just another way. Uh, I guess for right now, yeah, Hong Kong city looked beautiful at night. Oh yeah, gorgeous. Um, we got to see the land of the lost underneath uh, in the core of the you, earth. You thought of that too. I, I was like, "Where's Will Ferrell? Where is that son of a bitch at?" Because exactly. that was or, God your, damn uh, it. journey to the center of the earth as well too is another one. Uh, but at the same part, like that's what we got to kind of see here. We got to see monkey find axe, monkey use axe, and um. Oh my god! Yeah, monkey charge, <laughs> charge up axe, and yeah, it okay. Was, it, there, there was a lot going on, and I think it's safe to say that this movie ended with some new friendships. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So let's talk about Kong then, since you said that. Let's let's talk about Kong. Uh, for those of you who are listening who do not know, we have reviewed pretty much every new Godzilla Kong movie that's come out in recent years, check them out in our, in our search tab on our website or on your social media tab. But we have done uh, Godzilla King of Monsters and we have done Skull Kong Kong. I can't talk Kong Skull Island. You tried. Uh, you, it was real close. I tried. I tried. And everybody who has listened to the episode before knows how I feel about that Kong movie. I have not revisited since. So where's Kong? 
So Kongsko Island happens in the 70s, right? Correct. So now in this movie, Apex or the government or whoever has put a dome, a holographic dome around Skull Island to keep Kong captured. Yeah, yeah. They they built a habitat around Kong in Skull Island because the storm took over the island. The storm that surrounded once surrounded the island has now consumed the island and as it pans out, which we get a lot of pan shots here. Yes, we do. Um it just I, I think at the start and the end of almost every scene. Anyway, uh we get to see a zone out of this giant uh Truman show esque dome that Kong is now living in and he knows it. He's quite pissed about it. He throws trees at the walls or at the dome every day. Yeah. And but but he's made friends with a little girl with a heart of gold. He's made friends with little girls. Everyone also, the uh, indigenous people to the island, also gone. Just like Hong Kong. Yeah, they, they're, they're out of here. But not by Donkey Kong. I mean, so, it, it's, <laughs> the storm took them over, and that's what they say. So let's just get them out of there. So before we go on, because I, I had a problem with this, and I just want to make sure that you and I are, are, are kind of saw the same thing. We're on the same page. Oh, we owe plenty of problems in this movie, bud. Okay. So... Kong Skull Island happens in the 70s. All that stuff happens in that movie. And then throughout the next 30, 40 years, whoever uh, realizes that a storm is coming through, uh, well, the storm that that surrounded the island, and it has wiped away a huge part of the island, so they build this dome habitat to keep him alive. That's the only reason. Correct. Yeah, I don't. I'm pretty sure it was in Monarch that built the dome. Was it Monarch? Because we also have Apex now, which I don't remember Apex from any of the movies. Yeah, Apex is doing some shit now. Uh, they are the new baddie, the new corporation that has kind of taken over. Mm-hmm. Um, run by a very evil family, apparently. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, a, a father daughter team um, that uh, really just want to kind of. Um, they have. Apparently, they have Earth's best interest in mind when creating uh, this defense unit, a global defense unit against the Titans. Right. Uh, is, at least that's what it seems to be. And But it's, you know, the age-old tripe of just like, but they'll go to any means to get it, and they don't care who they betray or backstab and stuff like that. But whatever. Uh, they also have magic spaceships, magic uh, floater spaceships that can withstand the double times flip gravity that apparently is in the inner part core of the earth. Okay, um, yes, let's talk about that. So how did how did this hollow earth thing come apart? Because one of the biggest issues that I have with this new rebooted Godzilla Kong first is that they spend too much time with the human characters. That's not what I'm here to see. I'm see to I, I I'm here to see the monsters destroy things and fight each other. They spend way too much time. It took 38 minutes before Kong fought Godzilla in the ocean. That's that's too long. So I mean, that's why... gonna, it's going to be your setup because first off, there's a lot of star power in this movie. I mean, really? I mean, you just got what Millie Bobby Brown? I mean, Rebecca Hall, I guess. No, 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 no. There's okay. So aren't that these Alexander uh, Skarsgård? Okay. So you got sure. so you got one of the Skarsgårds in there. Perfect. You got Brian Tyree Henry, who's going to be. He was in Atlanta with. Um, Don Glover, he mm-hmm. was been there, and then he's also going to be in the new. He's, he's a Marvel contract now. He's one of the Eternals, so okay. we'll we'll definitely be watching him later, and mm-hmm. you'll probably be seeing a lot more from him as well too. Um, who is that? Uh, Isaac Gonzalez, who was in the last movie that we just watched, right? Uh, who was in I Care a Lot? Who was also in Baby Driver too? It's pretty good. Yeah, I like that movie. She's uh, she's she's coming up. She's got a lot of a lot of movies. You know, I think we've talked about her kind of role in in movies before. You know, maybe like a, who would we mention? Like was it Catherine Zeta Jones? You know, where where this movie you get it, you stack it with a bunch of stars in hopes to to kind of boost them up a bit. You also have Lance Reddick in here, Kyle Chandler, baby. Um, <laughs> Julian Dennison, who's the who's the little uh, New Zealand kid from Hunt for the Wilder People. 
Are um, you done? Are you he's, done? He's. I'm. I'm trying to tell you this movie served a purpose, and it wasn't just to have two animals fight. <laughs> okay. So what's the purpose of this Hollow Earth then? Uh, to boost the credit of all the actors. Uh, no, it was just a, a reason. It's an origin, right, for all the Titans. That's where Kong family is. Kong's family is from. Is from the allegedly the Earth. allegedly Godzilla. I don't know. We'll save it for later. So, first of all, this was never brought up in other movies before. It's ridiculous. What happened to Mudo? They stopped. That is not true, Mudo? David. They talked about it at Kong the Skull Island. About the Hollow Earth. Earth. Did they? Yes. I don't remember. I haven't seen that movie since we reviewed John it. Goodman's theory and the whole purpose of, of he did a ruse. He, he um, told them they were going to, to do one thing when they really were doing another. They wanted okay. to, to check the, the mystery of the island for something else, but he really wanted to go there because of Hollow Earth theory. Okay, so not to quote Scream, but it's a valid point. Do they really find out why Norman Bates went nuts? Do they really find out why Hannibal Lecter liked to eat people? No, they don't. Why do we have to have an origin of Kong? Godzilla I get because he's a fucking nuclear bomb metaphor for Japanese. That I understand. But we don't have to have a King Kong is actually from the middle of the earth where things are like a Picasso painting and weird and upside down and there's other monsters. There's no reason to have just have a giant monkey. Can we just have a giant monkey? Giant monkey. Ape. Whatever. Yeah. Uh it's uh no no, you're right. So anyway, so so Godzilla attacks facilities and everybody's like, oh my god, he's like, he's bad. So then they pull King Kong out of his habitat to fight Godzilla? Yes. I, I here's the weird thing is that um <laughs> So this the movie takes place after the events of King of the Titans, all right? King or, or monsters, King of the monsters, King, King of the monsters. Jesus, I I'm trying real hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this movie takes place after the events of of that, much longer after the, the events of that. Apparently, Godzilla once he had defeated that three headed dragon, he went dormant again and was cool and chill, and everyone had an agreement. That Godzilla would be like, listen, dudes, I just want to go back to bed. You guys woke me up. You guys are fucking me up. I need to go to sleep. It's what I do. You guys keep on waking me up, and I don't like that shit. Right. And that's that's what his origin story is, albeit silly. Yes, uh, but that's just it is what it is. He wakes up this time, and everyone's concerned. And pissed off because it's like, God damn it, Godzilla, you, yeah, you did it, you done it again. You woke up, you came in, and you did a whole bunch of damage, billions of dollars of damage, trillions even. You had destroyed Pets, uh, Pensacola, Florida. No one really cares, including Florida. They didn't really seem to act too much on that. They were just right. kind of like, oh, no, don't do not do it, Godzilla. You know, and they were just kind of doing that whole thing. Um, but the reason why is because... Apex was making something that was waking that boy up. Yeah, he was pissed because he knew that they were making something. Somehow Godzilla in his slumber in the ocean was like, oh, they're waking something. They're waking something. They're, I can't talk tonight, everybody. They're making something, so I'm going to wake up and attack the facilities. Would it have been better in a good version of this movie if it would have been Godzilla attacks the facility, and then 10 minutes later in the movie, Godzilla attacks the facility where Kong is at, because underneath the facility where Kong is at, uh, they're making the thing that they're making. So then it's like, oh, okay, so that's why these two are fighting. No, Godzilla's back. We don't know why. So we're going to take Kong, put him on a battleship, and, you know, just take this this giant ape across the ocean. Why not? Yeah, I— you're right. This, this, the whole fight that they have really does seem quite unnecessary. Very and because, unnecessary. Because both of them seem to be chill, not fighting each other. Like That's right. There was no reason for the fight. They know so much about Kong, but they know dick about Godzilla. It, it just seems like they should have, you know, it, they are able to speak and communicate to Kong using some Congo fucking technology, a sign language. I'm sorry. There you go. And 
there is they they don't really know much about Godzilla besides how to make a giant robot version of him. And 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 robot and then the robot and then Godzilla decides just to attack the the battleship fleet because Godzilla's like, hey, there's a giant ape, I'm going to attack him. Oh, that's they, ridiculous. They also use the skulls from the three headed dragon. Remember that to use as a supercomputer conductor. Apparently, they, they put a whole bunch of cyberpunk cables and wires into the skull, and the skull has a lot of energy power. You know, I'm just going to say stuff <sighs> for the movie that would allow them to control. It's a it's a weird thing, but basically, a guy made the ultimate gamer station by making like a super chair inside the skull of the one of the dragons and. He would then zone into the Mecha Godzilla um, and fight. Mm. So every every nerd's wet dream when it comes to that inside the skull, right? So I was wondering. Okay, so I seen the trailers. They're gonna fight on battleships. How is Godzilla, who is supposed to be the biggest Godzilla they've ever have had and the biggest Kong they've ever had? How was that gonna happen on battleships? It happened. Yeah, that I mean, didn't really it, make uh, a, a whole lot. Kong was able to jump around. We got a capsized boat that was able to be flipped back over in the nick of time. Um, we had the yeah. epic scene when Kong was chained to the battle cruiser, and Godzilla was coming, and they're like, "Oh no, well, good, you know, God damn it, you gotta release him." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that voice. Just yeah. trying to release him. We're gonna release. <laughs> Like your fucking Nixon right there. That's great. It's it's Perfect. exaggerating, but you know what I mean? It's just like, you can't release him. We're all going to die. It's just like, but if you don't, then we're going to die anyway type of thing. Right. It, it just seemed kind of so, uh, you know, like it's almost like you paid homage to something. It, it tried to. There was no homage to be paid to because this is not at all close to the original. It was predictable. That whole that whole scene, that whole dialogue was so predictable to even to the point when the boat capsized. Mm -hmm. And Alexander Skarsgård does this epic swim move, obviously because he's underwater, towards the control panel to pull the lever that releases the change of Godzilla. And then, obviously, that that's the spike we need. Right. To be a part of that family, by the way, the Skarsgård family, it's like, hey, hey, brother, I'm going to get ready to do Godzilla Kong. Oh, that's cool. That's got done doing Pennywise. Kiss my ass. These, uh, the Skarsgård family um, is, is a family. It is. So after this big epic battle, they're like, hey, guess what? Uh, we Apex is going to send the daughter of the CEO, and we're going to go to Hollow Earth. And I'm like, oh, we're actually going to go here. This is going to happen. Okay. So blah, blah, blah. They fall, time jump, whatever, Hollow Earth, blah, 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 blah. And this is – I laughed out loud. And and I and I don't mean that figuratively. Like literally, I laughed out loud because I'm like, "Where is Will Ferrell?" Now I said that joke earlier, but it's true. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah, this design is absolutely terrible. Yeah, and they did some sort of um, weird like law, law, and then Land of the Lost was like like a Inception type of oh, thing. Oh, just why does things have to be upside down? Kong's Kong's relatives, family, his, they would never live again. In this they kind of and they have. They have magical ships that are able to kind of, you know, cruisers that are able to just kind of defy logic and uh, able to th fly through all of the plot holes that are laid in front of them. Right, including the plot hole of just, well, it's not really a plot hole, but it makes no sense. The gratuitous stupid fight that, that Kong had with the flying snake. It was yeah, like a that, flying snake. That yeah, seemed, was, uh, uh, well, some sort of serpent, I guess. And then, it, and then of course, Kong had a chop off its head and and suck its brains out or eat his brains like that was unnecessary because kong's never done that don't you judge him he, he hasn't done that before that's not his mo he you're right he did eat a giant squid a giant and, squid he was hunting he was hungry this he was not he was washing his wounds and that squid attacked him well valid but you know so, okay. Do you remember do you, do you, do you see how much I remember that movie? That's exactly what's gonna happen with this when the next one comes out. Seen it five out. times. Oh my god. You've seen Skull Island five times since we saw it in theaters? Uh including that one. Oh god. Okay. I maybe I gotta watch it one more time. No, it's it just 
like we were talking about kind of again the other the last week and the week before about some movies just appeal to a certain audience this one is just senseless action right. i can understand uh um kind of what they're trying to set up and go for here it's really dumb to have these characters just kind of play who they are to have uh, uh this guy bernie hayes who runs this conspiracy podcast about epic and saying that oh this is what's happening they're not telling you about godzilla uh, you know, that they know about this and they know about that and they're working on this and they're working on that and try to uncover this all this uh, conspiracy stuff in the character or that Millie Bobby Brown is going through some alternative phase as a teenager while her father, uh, goddamn Kyle Chandler, is the is the is probably the worst father in the world but the right. same part, like, I, I, I don't want to get it. I just don't. Oh, know. it's horrible. It's horrible. And, and you know Hollywood's getting really bad when they jump on the podcast trains. Like, I have seen a handful of movies where People are podcasters. Halloween remake in 2018 comes to mind. Yeah. Like, it's just, okay, okay, so now everybody knows podcasting is a thing, so now we're going to have our characters be podcasters for some reason. I don't know why I find that annoying. It's not offensive, just, like, why? There's no reason. What also is no reason is that Kong goes to hit Kong, – Kong does this beautiful gravity ape flip. <laughs> Kong, <laughs> to go, Kong to, is in, in ape heaven right now. Right, and he and he gets to and he gets to Ape Castle, I guess Kong Castle, and he opens it up, and you have all these flying bats, these gigantic bats, and they don't attack him because they're like, oh, it's a Kong, we got to respect him, kind of thing. And there's the throne, and it's like, <laughs> it's like, okay, there's a throne, <laughs> so so Kong himself came from Hollow Earth. His family was, uh, supposedly was he a did. Teenager. That's what we have. We we there are some some cave uh, sculptures that are there, in the form of his hand of other of other Kong like creatures. It's uh, it's a lot to take in. And it yeah, seems how did he get to Skull Island? That's the question. They they, I, who knows? Maybe he was born up there, or maybe. His parents threw him up there. I I don't know or some, away something. Teenager, who, something. I don't think I don't think it matters. All I know is that the humans that went down there were uh, unaffected by any oxygen or gravity. You whatsoever. thought the same thing too. I thought the same thing too because when they landed, Didn't when he was on matter, his throne, right? they yeah. came out. I was like, "Are you going to put a mask on?" Or no. And then Kong's just sitting there on his throne, like, "Hey, I'm sitting on a throne," and he just glances to the left and sees a spear, well, an axe. And the blade is a Godzilla fin spike thing. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what are they trying to say? And then he knows where to lay this on the ground. Never been there before. And it lights up a Godzilla sculpture around the throne. And that signals to Godzilla that that's where Kong is. That makes absolutely no sense what I just said, but that's what happened. I, I don't maybe we'll get more answers in the next movie. I mean right there no I don't I I think that is the answer. I think they're trying to say maybe we this will be the start of a beautiful friendship that maybe once upon a time instead of them being enemies Jordan they were actually friends. Okay. Despite an axe being made of of the <laughs> uh the mutilated axe of a of a dead Godzilla lizard. Yeah, cuz that's what I mean clearly the movie is telling me that in Hollow Earth, that's where all the Mutos or, or slash Titans came from. Yeah, I, and, I would say that too. And which is another reason why the human shouldn't be fucking down there. There's right. purple radiation rocks floating everywhere that turn obviously animals or Titans into uh, into weird super heaven creatures, and they're just walking around this shit like like it was a Tuesday. Like yeah. it's, it's horrible. The other part of it too is I made mention in the first uh, in the other movies about how the humans have a superpower as well, too, in this fucking franchise where they're able to instantly appear wherever they need to, to go in the world. Right. And we got that when the kids fucking, or uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Billy Bobby Brown and, and the two conspiracy friends fucking uh, zipped from wherever the hell they were to Hong Kong in the matter of, what, five, ten minutes? Oh, yeah, not even that. Not even that. You're 100% right. And there's Which this, is where her father yeah. was the entire fucking time, and he was worried, calling her, "Hey, you better stay home." I'm getting a little hyped up. I don't need to be. I don't need to be <laughs> because you, you don't need to be. You know? <laughs> yeah, I need to calm myself down. 
All right, so this is one thing where I got the feels. It means nothing to you or anybody who has seen this movie that's listening, but I was like, oh, I kind of feel bad for her. So uh, they there's a disturbance with all the bat creatures, and Godzilla is doing the whole radiation thing to go through the Earth to Kong Castle. And then, you know, these, these bat things are killing people and killing people, whatever. And then the CEO's daughter barely escapes with her life and she tries to fly through the hole but as soon as she gets to the hole Kong grabs her and she screams no 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 on the top of her lungs and he crushes the 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 fucking thing and I was like oh god damn I feel bad for her bye bitch I mean I would do the same thing too no 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 oh god so so they fly through earth and they come up the other side and the battle is beginning Kong versus Godzilla with the Kong battle axe. Godzilla so, is going to Hong Kong because that is where the Apex uh, factory is that is assembling the Mecha Godzilla. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, Godzilla, feels the vibe, goes to Hong Kong to put an end to it, and that is also where we meet Kong uh, to come up. He is told, in sign language, that he needs to go defend the earth from the Godzilla uh, which he does and then he is told soon after that no wait Godzilla is friend and the monkey with that the ape without question says oh yeah you're right my bad my bad so we they activate Mecha Godzilla he looks cool I mean he looks a lot better than the silver suit that the guy wore in the 60s and 70s oh, yeah. Uh, great, great design. I'm not going to knock him on that one. Um, one of the things that I was curious about was, was this leaked? Did people just guess? Because when the trailer got released, all the fanboys online were like, we just saw Mechagodzilla. And I was like, no, why would they put Mechagodzilla in this? And then I watched the trailer over and over again. To see what these people, I mean, there are trailer breakdowns on YouTube of guys saying, this is Mecha Godzilla. And it's like, you guys are reading too much into it. Sure. Well, I was, well, I was wrong. I got my face. I mean, it's Mecha Godzilla. Like, I just, because the section of the trailer that people were breaking down was buildings were falling and you saw a silver thing with red lights over a head. You, it was not clear what it was. Oh, Everybody's man. like, that's Mecha Godzilla. That's people Mecha Godzilla. Just... People just gotta be peeking, man. So, I mean, I'm not gonna dog the the Godzilla Kong Mecha Godzilla fight. It, this is exactly what I'm here for. This is exciting. This is an adrenalized uh, action. Nothing bad, really, uh, when it comes to that. Besides the overall destruction of Hong Kong, that was just ridiculous. And then, of course, after the battle, get ahead of myself a little bit. Uh, there's thousands and thousands of people. Just in the middle of the streets, like like everything's fine. Like, oh, this is a this is this is a Tuesday in the word of Eric. They were uh, they were slow to react. Mm. They were most certainly slow to react one day. Oh my God, I just could not could not understand it. Um, but got okay. So 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 Kong loses the first battle. Godzilla wins the second battle, and then they both come together to fight Mecha Godzilla, right? Sure. Okay. And then after that, uh, well, yeah, because uh, they were fighting each other, thinking that there was the, it was them, and uh, we got some good hits from from for both. You know, right. some some good uh, punches, obviously, some good action scene. We got the part of that was that it, they went to Hong Kong at night, and it was like this techno city, you know. Right. And it, it just looked really cool with the the neon lights, them crashing into the buildings, and that was cool. And then when Mecha Godzilla came up and it was it was daytime or morning um we got to see a different type of fight but um i'd say a really cool thing was seeing the axe charged up too i kind of called that one out right but you know you're gonna call out a lot of things in this in this movie we get this this big grand deal this big grand finale of them fighting and against each other and then the mecha godzilla um which is really what we came here for. That, that's why you bought the ticket, right? Well, I'll tell you why I didn't buy the ticket. That Mecha Godzilla could be destroyed by somebody spilling coffee in the computer. Yeah, you didn't think about that, did you? Oh, my God. 
why. Yep, that's all it took, man, with just a little bit of whiskey. They're like, uh, what do we do? Oh, let's just let's just spill coffee over. That reminded me of an bourbon. episode of this. Well, damn. that reminds Scotch me of an episode of the of, of of the Simpsons a while back. A uh, long, old episode where Homer couldn't figure out how to stop the nuclear reactor computer from beeping because it was ruining his nap. So he got up and got a bucket of water and poured it onto the computer. I thought you were going to do the uh, safety inspection where he did any, meeny, money, mo. No, but say yeah. and say the same. But yeah, I guess you got to just do. that's exactly what I thought. I was like, oh, it's just Homer putting. OK, this is this is how this is going to go. Uh, that instantly took me out of the movie. I was, I was checked out at that point. If, if I was in the theater, Eric, I would have walked out. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's ludicrous. I, how, how, I was how, able how to get you? rid. Yeah, no, I know. I get you. I was able to kind of look past a lot of it just to, just to get the action part of it. It's easier to know that I was at home watching it, that I didn't go to the movie theater and pay for it because yeah, I feel that a big advantage of having to watch all these movies is not having to deal with the shame of watching out of the theater after spending 40 bucks on something like this. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, when that happened, I was, I was done. And then what made it even worse was the battle's done. Kong and Godzilla look at each other. They both snort and Godzilla just, just, you know, swims yep. away. We didn't get a makeout scene. Everyone did not, did not happen, but no make out maybe next time. Or if you go to the right website, but now they can go to Hollow Earth anytime they want to, and now Kong is the ruler of Hollow Earth. He's got a chair and everything. <sighs> and this movie <laughs> won the box office. Yes, it did. So this this movie was made for two hundred million, and it's already grossed two hundred and eighty five million. So they made their money back. So there's going to be a sequel. There's going to be a sequel, and that's just from theater numbers, right? Too. We're not talking about from subscriptions at all. Right, which they have no idea. I mean, that's probably going to come out later time. I mean, but to have and you know, they're going to keep those numbers, dude. Netflix has some reason. There's no reason why they should. Right. I mean, in the latter end of a pandemic, for uh, this movie to make two hundred and eighty-five million dollars. All right, that's impressive. Yep. You want to switch to our ratings now? Mm Mm-hmm. There's really not much more to say about this movie. No, so uh, I always go first, Eric. You always end it, so I'll go first. I, I I wanted to give this a no bag, really, really bad. Yeah, okay. But I didn't want to sit there and go, you can't go one week and hyping it all up and saying, hey, guess what? I haven't given a large bag all year, and then boom, you give, I care a lot of large bag, and you give this one a no bag. That's just re- ridiculous, right? But with that aside, the movie had entertainment value. The movie was fun. I went into this not trying to be pissed off, knowing what I'm getting. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely a small bag. I mean, I definitely would have gone to the theater and had a small bag with this. I would have got done with it in the first 15 minutes. But small bag. The human characters are, are garbage. I don't care what anybody says. They're, they're garbage. They're not flushed out. And they spend too much time with them. Um, not a fan of the human characters at all. Kong looks great. Godzilla looked great. Mecha Godzilla looked great. The design of the monsters looked great. Um, the fights were even better when they did actually fucking fight. So I don't think it's like god awful terrible. I think it's better than King of the Monsters. I think King of the Monsters is the worst. So to say that, and then Eric will give to you here, I would say from best to worst, I would say the original Godzilla uh, to 2000 whatever, 14 one or whatever, that one is the best. Then you got uh, this one. Then you got Skong, uh, Kong Skull Island, and then you end it with uh, King of Monsters. That's where I think my ranking would, would go. But a small bag for me. Eric, how about you? What is your popcorn rating for Godzilla vs. Kong? Listen, buddy. Uh, expensive CGI bill? Stacked. Okay. Blockbuster cast? Full of them. Okay. Plot holes? Everywhere. Okay. <laughs> uh, Hong Kong? Destroyed. Political statement? Made. Okay, mm-hmm. this movie um, was silly. Expectations were met. I knew exactly what it was when I clicked on this movie, and I think you did too. Every actor involved did their best. It's not their fault that the story really just sucked. Nobody cares. Nobody. I, I get it. It was. It didn't need to be 
anything crazy. There was a bad guy, and then there were good guys. There was a Kong, there was a Godzilla, and then there was a Mecha Godzilla. Roll the credits. That's basically what this movie was. I know exactly what I was getting. I got some uh, 13-year-old me would have loved this movie. I am oh, not, yeah. but I am not 13, and so therefore, I get about the same entertainment as I would as an adult playing with trucks in the backyard. You know, it, it was fun for a minute, but I'm not about to do it again. And um, it's basically what it is. I'm not uh, uh, jumping up and down to watch this movie again, although I'm quite sure there will be a lot of young boys primarily who will be putting this on repeat and maybe getting some merch out of it too. This is a medium bag. It is a popcorn movie. A medium. This is a medium. Okay. I- I'm only saying that because I knew what I was getting into. I enjoyed all the action. Every part of when they were talking, I was laughing because of how ridiculous it is. It was fun to shit on this movie. So right. I'm, I think I'm giving it a medium bag just out of my experience. You know, the movie itself is nowhere. It should no, not be anything more than a small bag. But I had a fun time with this movie. I, I, I know what to expect from it. Not often are we watching these movies where I go in with these expectations and they actually are met. This one was right there in the title, Godzilla vs. Kong. I click on the movie, and it's exactly what I got. Some dumb shit. And um, that's, just, that's just what it is. Um, I, I had a fun time with it, watching okay. a bad movie. All right, no, valid. I mean, uh, 100%. I uh, cannot disagree with you at all. I mean, it's a bad movie, and nothing much to say up with it on that. Next week, we'll come back with another awesome episode. But before then, everybody who is listening, make sure to download us on Movie Guys Podcast at Bobby.com on all social media platforms and whatever you get your podcast from. Eric and I will be back next week for another awesome episode of Movie Guys Podcast. Have a good night.